And what I want to ask you here today is to compare your leadership role with the shepherds in Ezekiel 34, where it's the Word of God here now. This is not the Word of Chuck or the philosophy of some movement that's out there in America today, some newfangled, uh, newfangled philosophy has come along. This is the Word of the Lord. God spoke to these shepherds, and he said, Son of man, uh, prophesy against these shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Now, the first thing we have to do, man, if we're going to lead in our homes and our families, is that we have to realize that, the, that we bring home food not for us, but for those that are eating around our table. I'm not talking about just food here, guys, morsels of meat. I'm talking about the good things of life. What are those good things of life for? I mentioned last night that we're country folk, and we like four-wheelers and horses and tractors and that type of stuff. Um, if, if we've got stuff like that, is that for me? Is that Chuck's toys? This is something that as a family, whatever we have, we access together as a family, and if I allow television, which we have one night a week, we have television in our home, and when we're going to do that, I can't sit and think about what, what would I like to watch, uh, because if I listen to that, I'm going to, my deceitful heart is going to lead me to things that's, well, let's just be honest, it's not good for me, let alone my children, Okay? I don't believe any of us should ascribe to this idea of, well, while we have children in the house, we'll be careful what we watch. But when the children are gone, then we watch these other things. Do you ever consider that the kingdom of God is made up of people who are as children? Amen. As children? The innocence of children? Um, the softness and the kindness of children, except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. We need some purity. And we need to apply to us what we would say to our children. Well, whatever we allow to come into our home, into our family, men, we, we've got to realize that it's there to feed the family. It's not there for us. You know, uh, Kyle and I, a couple of weeks ago, we got into the bee business. And uh, we got us a hive and got it set up. And, and uh, we were kind of worried about this at first. I mean, we, figured, we had these visions of running and swatting and all this, you know, and trying to get back to the house, you know, and falling on the porch and them having to drag us in and get the bees off of us, you know, and take us to get our shots. Uh, but it didn't work that way at all. We've been, been, it's been really nice because only Kyle's gotten stung. I've not gotten <laughs> stung yet. It's, it's been, been, been really nice, and we've taken those bees out of that hive and looked at them, and they are so busy. And those bees, first thing, first day, I took the rags out of them, the, the hole there, the, after they were in there for three days, and those things came out, and they took off. And that very night, I opened those bees up and looked, and they were already in there making honey for that queen and for that colony. They were already working for others. And, you know, that's a good example for us because, men, that's what we're doing. What we have, what good things we have is for our families. And we, we've got to erase this idea of, well, I'm going to come home and sit down in this chair and snap my fingers. And you bring me tea and you bring me a Coke, you bring me some popcorn, you know, get me that TV remote. Um, we, we exist to serve. See, last night we were talking about love. The home is about love. And love is serving other people. It's being there for others. And you know what? It'll just wear you out. Just wear you out. I mean, let's get back to the bees there again. Excuse me, but bees are on my mind lately. I've been doing a lot of research about bees. But you know what? Those bees will sit in there and they'll, they're, they'll, um, their little wings will spin all winter long and they're just sitting there and they'll make it all winter. But whenever they come out and they actually begin to gather that honey for, for the queen and the others in the colony, the others that's coming along, They'll live 40 days and those clunk over dead. I mean, they just fly themselves to death out there working hard. You know what? I would rather die uh, at 50 doing what's right for my family and living my life for other people than live to be 100 and whenever I die, everyone says, boy, he was just a selfish old codger. Amen. You know, we need to learn to live our lives for other people. Our culture doesn't help us in this, and our old deceitful hearts are the worst thing of all in this thing. So, shepherds, 
don't feed yourselves. Feed the flock. That's what you're there for. Now, notice that these, these shepherds, their focus in verse 2 and 3. Verse 3, you eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you kill them that are fed, but you uh, feed not uh, the flock. Uh, their focus was on themselves. I present to you this morning, guys, that any focus that is on self is not love. I have a lot of lack of love in me because I wake up every day thinking about, my, what does Chuck want to do today? You know, what, what would be fun for today? But that's just not life. And, you know, what's interesting is, is that we can access all this day because we are so blessed. I mean, we can walk across the street and buy uh, toys doesn't matter what age you are. I'm not talking about little children. I'm talking about adults. There's always things that we can access. And I told you last night about my great-grandfather and his, his old, old work boots that he had put on when he was 100 years old. And he lived in a time of Great Depression and World Wars. And the only thing he knew was just hard work. You just work hard. And we've lost that ethic in our culture, and it's hurting our families. Because when we lose that hard work ethic, what comes in in its place is this soft life is all about me mentality. And culture cannot sustain itself on that type of a value system. So, and the church certainly cannot thrive in that type of a, of a, of a spirit and climate. So these men, these shepherds that were supposed to be taking care of the sheep, somewhere along the way they've just forgot about the sheep and they just got to thinking about, boy, this... We, we like having sheep around because it gives uh, lamb to us, and we like eating, and we like that wool. And, and they didn't really care much about the flock as long as they had the meat on the table and the wool for their, their clothes. kind of reminds me of America today. We just don't care too much about where stuff comes from as long as we get the stuff, as long as it's ours. And um, it's going to come back to hurt us. Uh, as, as a people in, in this country. Now, look at verse 4. Because in verse 4, they, even at the end of verse 4, it says, you've not uh, sought that which was lost. Sheep that get lost. They go out and, and the sheep would uh, go astray. And maybe they get in an area where uh, they could get hurt. They could fall over a bluff or whatever. And you guys have all seen the picture of Jesus where he's reaching over. He's the great shepherd. He's reaching down there to pull that sheep up. Well, you see, men, that's what we do as our families because uh, as, as leaders in our families because uh, we can pray all we want to that Jesus protect our, our children and our wives, but there's some things that just takes uh, some firmness for a man to stand up and say, no, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute here. You, you don't treat my wife that way or you're not going to do this to my children. Um, there, there has to be the shepherd that, that does something, and God has called us to be that shepherd. We are the Lord's arms. We are His voice. And we are the one that reaches out and, and does, does the grabbing. And today I see so many sheep, so many young sheep, especially being a high school teacher, I see so many uh, teenage sheep. It just seems like that's such a troubled time in people's lives. And it seems like so often it's easy to get over that bluff and just hanging there over the precipice and, and looking around wondering about the world that they live in. Why am I here? And why is it that, that I'm about to fall over this? And, and aren't my parents up there supposed to care for me? Why aren't they reaching down? to help me in this thing. And sometimes it's hard to deal. You know, when I first went in the classroom 26 years ago, I, I went in there and, buddy, I was tough. I went in there and I just laid the law down. Now, listen here, guys, this is the way this is. And, you know, as I was telling you last night, rules without relationship equals rebellion. And I found that out before long. And you know what? Um, I've got some of the honoriest meanest high school kids. And this one particular class this year, they came in, and the first day I looked at them, I thought, oh, no, I, this is not going to be a good year. You know, I know, I know what, what, what we're going to be dealing with here. But you know what? Those kids are hurting. And if you just reach out and, and you minister to them from the heart, um, you know what? You, you can have people, I hate to use the old phrase, eating out of your hand. But that's basically what happens because the human soul is crying out and it's wanting somebody to care and somebody to say, where are the boundaries? What's right? What's wrong? What am I here for? What's my purpose in life? And men, as shepherds,